Right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the OnlyFans Football Podcast YouTube channel. As we have been disbanded from TikTok, we are on here, Adam. <laughs> um, they didn't want us over there. But it is Chelsea versus Liverpool mm -hmm. in the Premier League this Saturday, half 12 kickoff. At Anfield. At Anfield. Mm. I'm not looking forward to this. I'm not feeling you're the same. <laughs> uh, do you know what? There's, there's a weird kind of anxiety <laughs> with it because. Like Liverpool will concede goals on Saturday, but I don't think Chelsea are defensively sound anymore either. So I can see us scoring goals. So I'm quite, I'm quietly looking forward to it, um, in a, a really strange way. But um, the battle of the mid table clubs. Of, well, okay, it's, it's bad to take these teams for contesting cup finals last season. Kieran, it really is. But um, and the games last season actually as well were top notch, weren't they? They were great games. Top of the drawer. And I don't know what happened, Adam. I really top don't. Top of the drawer. Top drawer, excuse me. Um, yeah, the games last season, of course, one one in Anfield. There was it was. Do you remember? I think it was Reece James got sent off on the line, didn't he? For yeah. Saving the ball. It was a handball. Uh, it absolutely was a handball. Um, Chelsea two, Liverpool two at Stamford Bridge. What a game that was! That was on the second of January. It was Salah and Mane's last game before going off to the Afcon, and I think it was a uh, Mateo Kovacic goal of the season contender that. Got Chelsea back into it, and then Pulisic made it to all the Nicolas. It was actually a crack game of <coughs> football. It makes me miss Tuchel so much. Anyway, mm. and then of course <laughs> the League Cup final in February, which, in which Liverpool won eleven ten on penalties. It's still hard to believe Quivine Kelleher with the winner that day. Kepa, of course, threw one over the crossbar <laughs> to give Liverpool sure. the League Cup title. And then the last game of the season was Liverpool six. <laughs> Chelsea 5 on penalties nil all in the FA Cup final another Cup victory for Liverpool over Chelsea um, first of all the games last season between the two sides were of unbelievable standard and I think it's fair to say this season the standard for both has dropped Carol. yeah and obviously the you had Tuchel and the instability of the owners etc etc um, this season but yeah then you obviously had Potter coming in in September mm. And since then, it's been up and down, up and down. Obviously, you had a good start. You had him winning back-to-back -back games, home and away against Milan. And then since then, and I'd say since just a few games before the World Cup, you had a lot of losses. And I think it's only two wins and ten. It's all gone to show you, essentially, mm. for both clubs. Um, you can tell a bit more about Liverpool. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you, Liverpool's form since the turn of the year just has been great. Um, before that as well it wasn't necessarily great I think the Champions League group stage was, was a good group for Liverpool in the end it turned out to be alright with wins over Ajax and Rangers and then Napoli as well strangely enough um, they've picked up wins this season over Man City and Newcastle which is it's good for them because these teams haven't been, been beaten too often but um, the midfield issue for, for Liverpool this season has been there for all to see and they have struggled massively um, with that Four games, four wins in a row, I think, in the league before their trip to Brentford. And then, obviously, the trip to Brighton as well wasn't great. Firmino, Jota, Diaz, Nunes, all out injured. Mm. Um, Van Dijk at the back's out injured. But I, I don't think he's been at his very best this season either. Um, so, yeah, it remains to be seen what team lines out on Saturday, essentially, for Liverpool. And it remains to be seen how they get on the cup replay against Wolves tomorrow evening. But... I suppose a big talking point here on for the game and for the league itself this weekend was the purchase of Mikhailu Mudrik, um, hundred million to Chelsea from Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, I suppose what do you know about him and what do you think he can add to the Chelsea front line? Well, I know he's a good player. I don't. I don't know if he's worth a hundred million. Um, mm. I think it was definitely a case of a lot of fans weren't expecting Mudrik to sign mm. at all. Um, we're expecting midfielders. You know, mm. I think midfield is a position that just needs threatening. Mm. You know, we talked about it earlier in the podcast, we talked about Casemiro being revolutionary for United. I just don't think this midfield has cut it in the last mm. few seasons for Chelsea, and it's definitely a weak point. Um, mm. So I was expecting us to bring in the midfielder, and maybe it could still happen. But Mudrick is a very good player. Mm. Don't get me wrong, he's a good, he's a good addition to the squad. He's young, mm. he suits in that bracket if, if Potter's going for youth. If he's trying to build a project around youth players, then he suits in perfectly into that bracket. Mm. Um, and if you're trying to move away from the likes of Sterling and Aubameyang, eventually I think he'll be someone that takes up 
the mantle. Um, but to be honest with you, Adam, I, I don't really know much about him. Mm. I don't watch Ukrainian football every <laughs> every week. But I, I would be I'd be worried in the sense from Chelsea's point of view that he looked like he had his heart set on Arsenal. I think he was he was kind of putting things up on Instagram and Twitter about Arsenal and I think he said something about Arteta being a great coach and the Zerbi being a great coach or something when Arsenal's playing Brighton. Something like that. I could be getting it wrong. So I, I, I don't know how committed he's actually going to be to Chelsea. That'd be my only issue from a Chelsea point of view. But he will be a good addition. And I, you know what? I probably would put money on him to score the weekend because it's that new sign bounce, isn't it? You, you do get that often. That on Chelsea. <laughs> you do get that often. And I can't see him having a good game on, on Saturday, Kieran. But I suppose we'll move on to our predictions for the game, Kieran. Uh, I'm genuinely, I'll predict first, I'm genuinely going to go with Liverpool 4, Chelsea 4. Um, I think it's going to be an extraordinary game of football and um, I think that's down more to the lack of kind of the lack of standard I suppose about clubs at the minute they haven't been great so I do expect a few goals to go in either for all or nil all will be my prediction but I'm going to earn the side of positivity and hope for a few goals at Anfield on Saturday and I'm going to go Liverpool 4 Chelsea 4 that would be an unbelievable game if that came true mm. But something tells me it's not going to come true. I, I'm going to go more negative here. And I'm probably going to go with... i go for a draw as well. I'll probably go nil all. Mm. Or one all. I'll say one all. Yeah. Just to be a bit more peasant or optimistic. optimistic yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, definitely Mugger gives a show for a goal. But I don't think he'll start on... I don't think he will start on Saturday, if I was to guess. Mm. I think Ziyech will probably start and he'll come off the bench. Yeah. But, yeah, I... It's going to be a good game. I'm excited. Mm. And that's our preview for Liverpool versus Chelsea this Saturday at half twelve in Anfield, Kieran. But we do urge you to listen to the rest of the podcast now on your Spotify stream. Thanks for joining us and we'll leave it there so. We'll leave it there so. Please subscribe as well.